Hello, and welcome back, most illustrious members of the detail. I'm your host, D, also known as MTF Doom, and today we're going to be talking about cards that are inversely correlated their power to the fun of the game. So the better these cards are, the worse the game is to play. I hope you enjoy. Just before we get started, the call to action as always, uh, if you can hit that red subscribe button down below, it helps me quite a lot. We're shooting for, we're at 221 right now. Let's hit 225 before my next video goes live. Can you, can you help me do that? Can four of you who aren't subscribed yet subscribe and help me reach a wider audience progressively, slowly, and in a grassroots way, which is how I prefer my coalition building? That'd be awesome. Thanks so much. Uh, a comment goes a long way. Joining the Discord is one of the best ways to directly talk to me. Uh, I try to respond to all comments. I definitely read all comments, but it's uh, much easier if you're in Discord and you're like, hey, I had this idea, or why didn't you do this for me to like hash it out with you in real time? And I love doing it, and I love getting feedback that way. Tomorrow's video, Today's video and tomorrow's video are both based on stuff I've gotten through uh, Discord feedback, so... Thanks for, thanks for listening. Okay, uh, we're going to get into it. So the idea of cards like this. Uh, this video came about, I said in the intro, uh, through Discord. I There's this talking point that I use a lot, which is like sometimes someone will bemoan that a card isn't better, right? Uh, kind of recently it was Black Bolt, and I agree, like I wish Black Bolt was better. Um, there was that new one. Let me search by unowned because I know I know I need this in the list because it fits this template very very well. Master mold. Um, well, you know, uh, master mold's not that good, right? Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> and the thing that I'll answer with is like that's for the best. <laughs> it's it's for the best that master mold isn't that good. And so these are cards that I feel like I get asked about a lot uh, by different people. Or, like, how would you change these? How would you fix them? Or just kind of complaining that they aren't good. And I want to describe this feature. This isn't a bug. It is a feature of this game. Uh, and it is something that if you've been playing for more than a couple of months, you you actually have you've lived through a couple iterations of this. And this is the idea that, like, some cards should not be good because their effects are abysmal to play against. If Master Mold added, like, for example, f three Sentinels or said, like, fill your opponent's hand with Sentinels or something, think of how, like, how terrible that would feel to play against. You'd suddenly have to win with a bunch of two threes that you couldn't ever like it would fundamentally kind of warp the war warp the warmat it would warp the format is what i meant to say so the the warmat would be forped completely around this card and everyone would start playing like um what's his name uh moon knight and stuff like it would just be like this abysmal abysmal like you know, set of play patterns that you'd be stuck in and everything would have to revolve around like, well, if my opponent master molds me on two, you know, what's my, what's my out to that? <laughs> uh, so, so stuff like that. Um, like I say, if you've been playing for a couple of months, you remember like arrow moving all your opponent's cards and then leader copying all their cards that they played on six was just like this absolutely optimal play pattern like you had to take special considerations to constantly play around it um the other one is like absorbing man it kind of has to be like this it has to be the last one um this uh, you're you're listening to someone who really really liked um shutter walk in hearthstone honestly st i still really like shutter walk it if you don't know shutter walk was a uh a card that basically said in um, snap terms on reveal copy all the on reveals you've played this game <laughs> uh, targets chosen randomly just in case it was like you know deal three to a target so you you would only play on reveal effects that didn't choose targets randomly like they were ones that were like on reveal basically you would play 
Okay, I'm going to do this in snap terms. You would play, like, Mr. Sinister, and then you would play Beast, and then you would play any amount of cards that dealt damage to your opponent uh, directly or, like, gained you life. And what would happen is, you, so now you play Shutterwalk. It makes a copy of itself, which is going to do all the on-reveals because you played Sinister. Then it's going to bounce the original copy back, so if the on reveals don't kill your opponent immediately you can just replay it again next turn because beast bounced it back to your hand the original copy back to your hand and costs one less and then it does a bunch of stuff that gains you life and deals damage to your opponent directly so the targets chosen randomly doesn't matter <laughs> and as long as you had played all those it basically guaranteed you a win and it basically like just like your opponent just had to sit there there was no fast forward in that game, right? For like effects that happen way too many times. Honestly, I'm playing a deck that runs Thor and Wong right now. And the fast forward feature doesn't seem to work because that Mjolnir uh, thing, it, the animation takes goddamn forever. And when it's going off like four or eight times, you're just like, why? <laughs> I don't, I'm winning and I don't want to see this. Um, so yeah, cards like that. The, I Full disclosure, I bought Absorbing Man. He was my first pool four card that I bought right when I hit pool three. He immediately dropped to pool three and I've never played him. <laughs> um, so yeah, cards like that. Uh, Doc Ock. People, you know, if Doc Ock could come down a turn early, like if it was like a four eight or a four, I don't know, it could be like a four six. It wouldn't matter. If it was a four zero, it would probably be too good. Like it has to be a turn five play or the game is just like going to be abysmal. Same with like Sandman. And again, like if you're like cheating these out early, the game gets worse. Like you, I think you all kind of understand this. If you play, you have a sense of this, like how much less fun it is when your opponent plays one of these cards early. Um, Just for the record, I think Leech is in a better spot. I think the on reveal should say like, you know how magic is like, if you play this on turn five, uh, change a location to Limbo. I think Leech should be like, uh, on reveal, if you play this on turn five, silence your opponent's hand to stop the the high rolling. But, Or maybe if on reveal, if you have five or more maximum energy, silence your opponent's hand. So you can ramp into it and still play it on four, but you can't high roll into it or use temporary energy instead of max energy to do it. Something like that. Um... Black Bolt, if it could drop earlier, again, like, the the ability to make your opponent discard a card is different than you, the ability to make your opponent not draw a card. Because, like, Black Widow is a two cost that makes your opponent unable to draw a card for a turn. Uh, that is fundamentally different from making your opponent discard, even though it still denies the the draw. Uh, it still costs your opponent one card of their, their usable deck. Um... This being able to repeatedly discard is worse than repeatedly being able to make your opponent blank their next draw. You know what I mean? That makes sense, right? So these are all cards that like, and and they're what's more is that they're like fun to play with, right? If Agatha had <laughs> if Agatha had a better heuristic for playing cards, if she could like understand interactions or locations. <laughs> It would be abysmal to play, like, everyone would just play Agatha if she could play, like, even a little bit optimally. Because <laughs> she's a 614, and that's just a really good stat line, right? Um, and then, you you know, you could do other stuff while she played your deck. Um, but these are all, these are all cards. I just wanted to do a video, because I get asked about these individually fairly often, that um, for for the health of the game they have to stay not quite so good. And some of them, because it's just like, well, like leader was just way too optimal of a play. It was like too good for what it did. Um, you know, arrow was like very like easy to abuse and good on five or six. Um, but, but most of them are just like, well, if they cost less or they had more stats, <laughs> like, you would just play them in way too many decks and you'd constantly have to like play around them. And th th those are the worst situations, right? The the most fun that you can have in a game most of the time 
is when both players are executing plans that they have like laid out and, and are unique to the deck they're playing. And the, the, you know, there's like player agency and freedom going on. And the least fun games are the ones where it's like, well, I know, <laughs> I know my opponent is going to go arrow into leader. Cause that's what every opponent does. <laughs> And uh, so that's it. So that's the the whole idea of this is just to give some insight into why I say that about certain cards. Um, Ma- I think Master Mold is especially egregious. I just don't own Master Mold. I don't intend to own Master Mold until he's pool three. But I think all of these at one point have been too good or if they were any better would be too good. So while I understand people like, ah, I wish this card were better. I think that it's really important to keep that in mind when you when you. I think you might not realize what you're in for if that card were better. And so that's that's all I wanted to do today is talk about that. Put that in your head. Maybe, you know, think think about this in a different way that you might not have considered before. Because, you know, I love doing that. And it's what people seem to want to hear. So that works out great for all of us, doesn't it? All right. If you find my content elucidating, enlightening, or enriching, the best way to let me know is with a subscription. Uh, or a Discord join, or all of the above. I hope that you have a great day, and I will see you all tomorrow. There's a there's a banger of a video tomorrow. I can't wait for that one. I'm probably going to record it right after this. All right, see you all tomorrow.